Well, we're delighted to welcome 120 human rights and arts practitioners to Galway for the first ever uh, summer school on the arts and human rights. Uh, artists, uh, arts practitioners and human rights workers share a concern for social justice, making a better world, uh, things of that type, but they never talk to each other. Uh, and we've so much to say to each other. The artists have, so, have a lot to tell the human rights practitioners to refine passion, give them direction, let them recognize what really matters, what's important. And the human rights people can also help the arts practitioners by, for instance, mapping out the safe space where the arts practitioners should be protected and unmolested and allowed to say whatever they want to say. So it's a very exciting three days. We're learning a lot about each other. We're learning how to do our own jobs better. Uh, and I think everybody will leave Galway a bit stronger in their work and to build a more fair world. When we conceived of the idea for the summer school, it was about bringing people together to forge um, or to participate in something very experimental. So many times the arts is a subject that human rights activists and practitioners explore and so much time human rights is something that artists really um, try to delve into as well. And rather than treating these two disciplines as things which are different, we wanted to explore the ways in which they might overlap and inform each other and drive the other uh, area forward. So we had the idea to bring people together and um, share our ideas, uh, share some vocabulary, share some practice, um, and hopefully inspire each other. My motivation is very simple. I have been working on the issue of cultural rights for many years now, and the opportunity to really have cultural rights and artistic freedom and creativity come together is something I've been advocating but it seems that it's been running in parallel streams and this is one of the big occasions where it's come together and I really hope that the human rights and artistic freedom come together in ways which are novel and which help us think of ways to address our problems today and a better future for tomorrow. It's really good to have an event on the human rights and arts in relation to human rights here in NUI Galway because uh, in the Houston School of Film and Digital Media we've got two courses, one which is public advocacy and activism, a group of students are thinking about ways of persuading people to think in different ways to change their opinions about things and a production direction course where young people are learning to make films. And so the advocates talk and present uh, briefings to the filmmakers and the filmmakers then choose how to make a short film about those issues. And some of them have been shown here at the conference and I think it adds to, it's a nice local addition to the issue of how images have a role in the world and uh, the possibility of, of, of using it in human rights uh, uh, issues. The exhibition that we have up in here is a critical platform for actually discussing and debating human rights, but not from a traditional advocatory approach. Um, so it's also a little tricky to bring it here at a human rights summer school because it's actually critical to the concept of human rights. So what we're trying to do here is to bring together the arts and human rights. I think what you hope to get out of, a, of coming to something like this is, obviously it's nice for people to understand what you're doing and uh, expose your work to other people. But I mean, ideally for me, to meet some people you might collaborate with. What I hope to uh, get, and I hope I've achieved, is to get a whole lot of new networks, and maybe uh, in the future try and get some real projects off the ground. We, as a group, can come up with ideas to, to use the arts to reach people. Arts and music are very powerful means. In order to bring the message across. To use art in a new way to reinvigorate the discussion on human rights maybe is, is a way forward. The ways that uh, art can contribute to our human rights work, I'm a human rights lawyer, and I usually work with uh, language, with words uh, in courtrooms, and, but uh, through art we can actually reach a wider public. 
both aim at pursuing happiness. I think it is really important because it engages people's emotions. We need to be creative and we need to defend the rights of anyone. In my case, I'm defending the rights of minorities and indigenous peoples. Uh, but we need to defend that basic human rights in any of the uh, any activities. And doing that using culture is quite unique. For me, it's looking for, I suppose, uh, pieces of art which speak to an issue of human rights. I'm really happy. I hope that for the future we can find a good way to protect the artists as a human rights defender. Well, at the end of the day, we're just a bunch of people from a bunch of different countries and a bunch of different places coming together to talk about things that we feel passionately about. Human rights and the arts empower us and they make our life better. In people's lives, art is just about how they live. You don't, you don't rationalise art a lot of the time, it's emotional. And I think that's where the power lies. I believe that all media are essential in every culture, in every country. I think, you know, there is no way that one single medium is enough for the huge range of questions that are raised. You know, some people will read a newspaper, other people won't. There are fewer people reading newspapers now. There's a whole Facebook and Twitter and all of those kinds of things going on. So I would say let us engage every single possible media in order to bring people's attention to the fact that human rights are essential. Frankly, what I would like is what Bob suggested, what Collins at the end there, that there actually should be a declaration of the human right to art and culture. That's what I would like.